to seventh class. I am Renu Bahuguna. I will take your geography class. Today we shall start the first chapter, representation of geographical features. In this chapter we shall do various topics. The first is topographical survey maps. The second is use of colors on topographical maps. And third is the grid reference. Fourth is scale, uses and types of scale. Fifth is measuring distance on the map. And last is conventional signs and symbols. The first topographical survey maps. In this heading, first of all we shall do the meaning of topography. Topography is the arrangement of natural and artificial physical features of an area. Topographical maps are based on topographical surveys. These are performed at large scales. Topographical maps are an important tool. These maps are useful for planification and town plans. All the natural and man-made features are portrayed by means of symbols, conventional signs. Now the next question, what are the uses of topographical maps? Now we shall do the uses of topographical maps. Topographical maps serve as a guide for travel and these maps are used for military purposes also. The next these maps provide useful information to engineers, town planners, tourists, geographers, etc. Now the second topic is use of colors on topographical sheets. Each color used on maps has its own significance. These colors are universally accepted. The natural and man-made features on topographical maps are shown in color as yellow, brown, red. All these colors show different things. Now the third topic is the grid reference. Before starting this heading, we should know about vertical lines or horizontal lines. Vertical lines, the dear children, all of you can see in this way and horizontal in this way. The mix-up of vertical and horizontal line is called grid reference. The network of vertical and horizontal, it is called the grid reference. The network of vertical and horizontal lines or you can say the eastings and northings is called the grid. Now you will think about eastings. The vertical lines which are numbered from west to east are called eastings and northings the horizontal lines which are numbered from south to north are called northings. Now the fourth topic we shall start is scale. A scale we can divide into two groups. The first is large scale maps and the second is a small scale maps. First of all, I will define large scale maps. These refer a small area in greater detail. A small area in greater detail and a small scale maps show a larger area in less detail and space. Then we come on the point types of scale. We can divide into three categories. The first is verbal scale. Second is representative fraction scale and third is linear scale. First verbal, second RF and third is linear scale. Verbal scale. First of all, I will define verbal scale. In this method, the scale is expressed in words. Example, one centimeter on the map represents 50 kilometer on the ground. Second is RF scale. It shows the ratio between the distance on the map to the distance on the ground. For example, 
If RF is 1 ratio 50,000 means 1 centimeter on the map represent 50,000 centimeter on the ground. The third is linear scale. This scale represents the relationship between the distance on the map and distance on the ground. It is the most important or you can say accurate method of measuring distance on the map. Then we come on the fifth topic of the chapter. This is measuring distance on the map. Distance is measured in kilometer, meters or centimeters. It is normally measured in a straight line with the help of a scale. After completing fifth, we shall come on the sixth topic and the last of this chapter. This is conventional signs and symbols. These symbols give a lot of information in a limited space. With the help of these symbols, maps can be drawn easily. Maps have a universal language. These are called conventional signs and symbols that can be understood by all. I think all of you understood. Thank you.